Hello and welcome. My name is Chinchilla. Tonight we're going to talk about the backstory of Final Fantasy A Realm Reborn. So basically the 1.0 story that we got to play leading up to them taking the servers down and us starting anew with A Realm Reborn. Uh, it's a really cool story. Very Final Fantasy, you know, what we love. If you like this video, you can go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook at Happy Chilla or on Twitter at, or both! Hey, let's not limit it here. On Twitter at, at Chinchilla PFA. Uh, the display name for that's also Happy Chilla. So let's uh, strap on in. Enjoy the story of the seventh umbrella. Um, um, whoa! Whoa, Chilla! Seventh umbral era. There it is. The first signs of the coming of a new Umbral Era came in the form of a sudden change in both monster behavior and size. Creatures all over Eorzea began to grow in size and ferocity, and the lesser moon, Dalamud, otherwise known as Menfinia's Hound, began to glow red and also grow in size. A prophet by the name of Varanger soon appeared to spread the word of the coming of the Seventh Umbral Era. He was deemed a heretic by the Garlean Empire, to a point where Nail Van Darnus, legatus of the Seventh Imperial Legion of Garlemald, personally came to search for him and offer a reward for his capture. While the populace initially ignored the prophecy, new signs didn't take long to appear in the form of odd weather patterns. Rain became far more common, even in the deserts of Thanalan, and the Black Shroud had tempests lasting for days. All the while, Dalamud continued to grow with each passing day. On top of this, the Garlean Empire began to prod into Eorzea, sending detachments of the Seventh Legion to assault small hamlets across the land, as well as raiding crystal deposits in Coerthus. With the Empire on Eorzea's doorstep, a call went out for the Grand Companies of Eorzea to once again be reborn in order to defend the realm. And so, the Immortal Flames, the Twin Adders, and the Maelstrom once again came to be. Aided by both the Garland Ironworks and adventurers all over Eorzea, the Grand Companies started investigating the sudden aggressiveness brought on by the Empire after years of stalemate, and discovered the Empire was trying to accumulate high amounts of ceruleum, the substance used in powering their Magitech technology. Yet trouble did not stop there. The beast tribes of Eorzea began to grow restless, and two tribes succeeded in summoning their gods. Both Ifrit and Garuda were brought into Eorzea, only to be defeated by valiance of the Grand Companies. Little were they aware that this was in fact feeding the Empire's sinister plans. As if to add to the struggle, the Grand Companies themselves were reluctant to ally themselves with one another. Limsa Liminsa struggled to keep the Maelstrom afloat by attempting to unite the various pirate crews under one banner, while Uldah's syndicate was wary of backing Flame General Raban and granting him even more pull within the Sultanate. Naturally, their opinions changed once it became clear that the war with Garlemald would in fact be a great boon to the economy, and their pockets. Gridania's twin adders were plagued with their own issues, as the Twelves would remain under heavy pressure from the Garlean Empire, and they lacked the funding to fortify their defenses and forces. Though there was an alliance between nations not ten years past, it had long been abandoned. As time went on, attacks by the Empire grew more frequent and intense, and it soon became obvious that all-out war with Garlemald was inevitable. It was also revealed that Sid Garland hailed from Garlemald, and was the son of Midas Nan Garland, the late Grand Minister of Industry in Garlemald, and one of the Emperor's most trusted servants. Sid himself was named a Minister of Industry simply due to his father's legacy, and he had previously worked on the Meteor Project. Sid fled Garlemald after his research into the Meteor Project, caused the destruction of an entire city and the death of thousands of innocent lives, known as the Bozja Citadel Incident. Nothing was left after the, dis after the disaster, not even a single corpse. Now labeled an Imperial Turncoat, he formed the Garland Ironworks and moved to arm Eorzea with Magitech technology in order to stand in even ground with the Empire. It became clear that the Empire intended to continue its research with the Media Project and to use it against Eorzea. It appeared to be desperate attempt to cleanse the land of the Primals, the elemental gods of the Beastmen and allow for the Empire to seize control of the country. Not soon after that, it was also revealed that Dalamud, 
was, in fact, a colossal machine created by the Alleghans, not a natural satellite that many assumed it to be. After a brief period of respite, the Garleans once again slammed Eorzea with a massive assortment of random offenses, this time utilizing a new type of Magitek weaponry known as the Vanguards. All these seemingly random attacks from the Empire were later revealed to have a simple purpose, the distraction of the Grand Companies so that the Empire could build a base of operations within Mordona without opposition. More so, this base would soon be used to house the Lunar Transmitter, a device crafted through the use of ancient Allegan blueprints, meant to harness the full power of Dalamud. It was as the world sat on the edge of destruction that Khan E. Senna, Elder Seed Seer of Gridania and General of the Twin Adders, sent out a call to Admiral Merlwib Blofishwin and flame general Raban Alden. Alone, the city-states of Eorzea would fail, but if they were to unite under a single banner, they may just stand a chance. With Limpsalimins's navy at the ready, Uldah's impressive wealth prepared to fund this new partnership, and the blessing of the elementals within the Twelveswood, the Eorzean alliance was reborn once again. Under the banner of this new alliance, an elite strike team was sent into the Garlean fortress of Castrum Novum, and a decisive blow was dealt to the destruction of the lunar transmitter. Nail Van Darnus also began to lose the last grip he had on his sanity, at this point as Dalamud's corruption began to twist him into its loyal harbinger, one willing to sacrifice his own body and soul in order to achieve Dalamud's supposed will. Though the attack on Castrum Novum was a success, Nail Van Darnus called upon the Red Moon itself and warned that the destruction of the lunar transmitter would not stop the fall of Dalamud. After managing to escape, Nail Van Darnus seemingly went into hiding. Scouts from the Grand Companies began to scour Eorzea in an effort to root out the White Raven, though it would be several weeks before their efforts bore any fruit. The call eventually went out that the Legatus had been seen wandering near Allegan ruins in Quarthus. Troops were assembled and sent to the region, only to find a patch of floating islands, emanating a light similar to the one previously seen on Castrum Novum. Fiery rocks began to rain down from Dalamud, as if answering the twisted Legatus' call, obliterating the majority of the gathered forces in Coerthus. Without any other alternatives to reach the Legatus, the company sought Sid Garlon for an airship. After a few preparations, he offered his personal airship, the Enterprise, as a means to carry an elite team up to confront and finally defeat the Legatus. A fierce battle ensued upon the floating isles, and at last the White Raven fell at the hands of the Grand Companies of Eorzea. After taking his final breaths, Nail Van Darnus fell to the ground and shattered into a mist of red energy and be absorbed by Dalamud. They celebrated victory with a reunion in Gridania, and Sid assures everyone that Dalamud should no longer crash down to Eorzea. However, the Archeron, Luchwa, head of the Circle of Knowing, informs the player that Dalamud continues its descent. He bestows one final mission, asking the player to help summon forth the twelve Eorzean gods to stop Dalamud's descent. The Circle of Knowing assists in this matter, giving further insight into the situation. They mention that the act of summoning and sustaining even one god, let alone twelve, puts a great strain on the land. Thancred mentions the irony of disrupting etheric balance for this purpose after the player has taken pains to rectify it by destroying the primal. In the middle of the pilgrimage, Gaius van Balsar, Legatus of the 14th Legion, appears and offers congratulations for the victory over the White Raven. Gaius claims Nail's followers believe he's still alive and have entrenched themselves at the heart of Eorzea while sending a false report to Galamald declaring Meteor a success, and that the 7th Legion now plans to attack the Eorzean Alliance. Before leaving, he asked that the Alliance to do its best to avoid Dalamud's fall, as he wanted something left worth conquering. Jerk. In a final bid to drive the Empire out of Mordona and stop Dalamud, the Grand Companies of Eorzea rallied together to march on Castrum Novum while the Circle of Knowing prepared to summon the Twelve to Eorzea. They would clash with the remaining forces of the Seventh Legion in what would become known as the Battle of Cartano. More meteors began to rain from Dalamud as well, wreaking havoc across all of Eorzea. 
Many lives were lost amongst both the Eorzean Alliance and the Garlean Empire, though their battle itself would pale into comparison for what was to come. A massive key dislodged itself from Dalamud during the battle, slamming down into Eorzea and causing all attention to be drawn up to the fiery moon that hung below the clouds. Not soon after, the moon began to crack, and Dalamud's true purpose was revealed. It was no meteor. It was a prison. From the top emerged none other than Bahamut, an elder primal who had been sealed away inside Dalamud long, long ago. The Worm King let out a massive wail and smashed free from his prison, sending fragments rocketing down to Eorzea. The land erupted into flames as meteors and fragments of Dalamud ravaged the landscape in Eorzea's city-states. Yet the destruction did not end there. Bahamut made a sweep across the country, raining meteors in his wake. In a final bid to save Eorzea from destruction at the hands of Bahamut, the Archeron Lushua and the Circle of Knowing called upon the Twelve, summoning them to Eorzea. With their power combined, they attempted to once again seal away Bahamut and cast him back into orbit around Eorzea with a prison similar to Dalamud. Unfortunately, just as it appeared that the ritual would be complete, Bahamut shattered it and began to summon a final Mega Flare. With the summoning of failure, Lu Shua called upon Alphic, god of space and time, to save as many brave souls as he could by sending them forward into a rift in time itself. There they would remain to wait out the destruction and be returned when they were needed most. And that's where we kind of start five years later with the uh, with you, the player, showing up. And all the people that were at are now the legacy members. Um, and they have like a distinct mac mark on their back and stuff. And it's, it's really cool. You know, you don't really get to see play through the end of the world and then get to play again. So... All us legacy people are wicked lucky, and we're so lucky that this game's picking up, so we're going to have more people to play with now at, uh, relaunch. So, once again, Twitter, at Chinchilla PFA, Facebook, Happy Chilla, like, subscribe if you liked it, we'll continue the conversation, have a great day.